In this video, we take this 3.5 inch screen and enclosure, which I did a video review not too long ago, and turn it into a portable Raspberry Pi Boy switch. Uh, it, only, it not only works portably, but you'd also be able to hook this into a TV as well. Let's check it out. So we're back again. This time we have screen. But this time we've opened up the GameSir T1S. You can get the G3S, the G4S. Make sure you get the S model though, because the S models have the wireless 2.4 gigahertz fob, this little fob right here. So you do need to plug it in. I haven't set up my controls yet, so I'm gonna keep my old Logitech in there as well so I can set them both up. But now we have two wireless controllers hooked up and you know what we can play two player games so something I really liked about this box here was that it comes with that complete enclosure and if you didn't see my review on this check it out this does work with RetroPie it does work with Raspbian but a lot of you want it for retro gaming so you can obviously put this in like a Game Boy Advance a Game Gear swap out the swap it out and have a Raspberry Pi 3 you might have a little bit of a hard time fitting this in there because it's you know fairly thick you know, it's a full inch, I'd say. Um, however, or you could just take it as it is. I mean, it comes in an enclosure. The screen is showing here, but other than that, your Pi, and then you got the little, you can always seal that up if you wanted to, but you want to be able to access your micro SD and other things. And um, But this will turn into a Pi Boy switch, basically meaning it'll not only work for your portable, but it'll also work for your, um, for your HDMI as well. So when you get home, you can hook it through the HDMI, or when you're on the go, you can play it directly through uh, your uh, portable, whatever controller you're running. Now, you do need to add a battery to this, and you have a couple of options that you can glue a battery to the back, you can uh, have a battery dangle, do, dangling on, on the side of it, you can paste it to the one on the right or the left, maybe on the right because you, have, you don't really need much access to that except for the micro SD. You can Velcro it, you can glue it. For this video, I'm just gonna kinda start it off to show you that one of my initial ideas was just to get this case, get this case because it does fit directly in here. As you can see, I even have an extra about half inch there as so we can shut it down. And see now, this screen fits perfectly in this controller. Um, and you already have the case. So it could be an inexpensive way to have a little portable gaming device. Um, the other thing is you can always just leave it like this and have a cord. I'm just gonna run the power cord for this video. I don't have any batteries at the moment, but just like a cell phone charging battery will work just fine. I've made a similar build to this in the past. I'll put a link in the description. But um, in a second here, I'll just show you that we should be able to game with this no problem. I do need to configure the controller though. So once this boots up, I'm gonna be starting off with my Logitech F710, which was already configured to this, and then I'll just be adding that. So it says one gamepad detected, so let's see if um, that's coming up as an Xbox 360 controller. All right, and let's find this up. Let's go, here. Let's go back up. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, oh, left thumb, right thumb, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, select for hotkey, and now we're in, and here we go. Can't use analog, but let's say we wanna play Super Nintendo, Green Ninjas kick back. We pulled out my other controller to make sure this one was first. But I mean, we could always have played first and second player on here. And there you go. It's already loading. Start, 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 start. It does have turbo on this controller. It's a cool, cool controller. It says Xbox controller, but it's more of a, it's a PlayStation 3 style controller. Just comes up as an Xbox controller. And again, with the audio, you could put a headphone jack in there, some Bluetooth speakers. Or you can hook it up to a TV. I mean, it's in there pretty good. It's not gonna fall out that easily. Oh, shoot, that's, okay. 
Ooh. Oh, I hit up. I pressed up. Didn't didn't register. Okay, I um, still got hit by that. I always get hit by that stupid rock. There we go. Oh, still got hit. Oh, got right in the noggin. Okay, start select. Get you out of there. You need to play another game. You can do ROM hacks, Contra hard, hard corpse hack from Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. The police in the background. It's fitting, right? All right. Hard corpse. Here we go. First player, Ray. All right, let's do it. Nice. Reinforcements have arrived. Whew. Almost got hit there. I like these explosions. Oh, I got a laser. Oh shoot, we gotta kill this gas tanker. We're doing all right, we're still alive. Oh shit. <laughs> Got him. Got some more bombs. I think I just gotta hang out in the back of here, huh? Just kill him like that. Oh! Jumped over him! Alright, so you see, you know, it's very playable. Looking good. Start select out. You can save your state, select X. It's all running RetroPie, good to go. So there you have it. I mean, it's super fast. I can, look, I can scroll through this stuff really well. You can change the theme, search for games, things like that. Let's try showcase on here. So not bad. Go into the games. See, it still, it still looks great. Really nice stuff. So there you have it. That's the portable bot pie boy using this um, screen. I'll put a link to the screen and everything else. You could probably do other screens as well. You definitely want one better than 30 FPS. I hear the 30 FPS ones aren't as good as far as the refresh rate and things. I mean, they're playable, but just nowhere near as good as these 60s or a little bit nicer. So it might be worth a couple extra bucks to go for a little bit nicer of a screen. Um, but overall, love it. Uh, I know I didn't put a portable battery on this, but that's a very easy step. Basically, you just go from the portable battery USB to a micro USB into the Pi. Um, I've done battery tests on that. If you get a 10,000 milliamp battery pack, you're looking at somewhere between four and five hours of gameplay, which is plenty good. And these controllers last, you know, 40 hours, something like that. This is brand new out of the box. It's already charged halfway, and it would it, it would need to be charged maybe half as much or one third as much as the actual battery pack for there. So there you have it. I made other videos on that, so I'll link them if you want to see the exact specifics. But there you have it. Very simple, very clean, very fun. And if you want to put this back on your TV easy to do. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.